Hey, Seth David here from the world-famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. I haven't done anything in a while on accounting for real estate with QuickBooks Online. I'd done a bunch of stuff a while back, but I'm going to be launching a series of courses on the subject from everything for, on property management all the way through to and including uh, accounting for real estate with QuickBooks Online for both brokers and agents, doing it from both perspectives. So today I wanted to give you accounting for real estate brokers in QuickBooks Online, the essentials, right? This is really just what you need to know to get started. And what I'm hoping you'll get out of this is that if you take what I'm showing you conceptually here, you can extrapolate it to almost any situation. We have a couple of assumptions in place that I've laid out for you here. And I strongly suggest before you you sit down to record a deal in QuickBooks Online, that you sketch it out on some kind of a template like this. You should be able to reconcile everything down to the deposit that comes into your brokerage account. This is, again, going to be from the pr uh, perspective of the broker, right? We're also making assumptions here that our deductions are being paid directly out of title, right? So uh, that has its implications. It means we're not getting the full amount of our 22500 here. We're going to have a $450 royalty, which we're going to assume is being sent directly from title to the franchisor. And the agent is being paid their commission directly out of title. And the reason I wanted to highlight this specifically is it's come up recently and come to my attention that when this kind of thing happens, and it does happen, uh, a lot of brokers out there are under the impression that all they have to do is report this. They don't have to 1099 the agent. They only have to worry about what comes into their bank account, which is a big mistake, and it's definitely wrong. Uh, you're, and, and as a result, you'd be uh, looking at some serious exposure there because you're underreporting your income and you're underreporting your expenses. I get that from a layperson's perspective, it all washes out and you're thinking, what's the difference? But it doesn't work that way in accounting. In accounting, we have to report the gross amount that you earned and then we get to deduct the expenses. But we have to show the whole thing and we most definitely have to 1099 the agent. Yes, the title company paid the agent, so you might be thinking, well, they should 1099 the agent. But no, their payment to your agent is not their expense. It's your expense. They're just paying it on your behalf. So you're the one who, if you want to report the expense, certainly you have to uh, you have to show it, deduct it, and 1099 them for it, right? Otherwise, uh, you would be subject to tax on the entire 22500, right? So again, lots of issues with ignoring what's going on in between the 22.5 and the 4,050 in this case. So let's take a look and see what the right way is to record all of this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an invoice. And the customer, by the way, this comes up right away. How should I name the customer? I've seen uh, brokers who use the title company. It's really wrong. The title of the company is not your customer. I get that they're the ones you actually have finally got the money from, but they're not your customer. The customer is the person you represented on the listing, you know, on the buy or the sale, right? So I have an example here that we can use of John Smith, and then here's the property, 123 Main Street. And that's how I'd recommend organizing your customers. I've done videos in the past talking about it, for example, from the agent's perspective, where you might put this under the, um, under the broker that you were working for at the time of the listing. And uh, I had a Keller Williams guy blasts me on my vlog about that saying, you don't really understand it from the agent's perspective. Rest assured I do. When I tell you how to do these things, I'm making suggestions about how I might have you do these things. It doesn't mean I'm saying this is gospel in the only way. Um, I'm saying this is definitely one way that you can do it that in my experience works well. So with that in mind, this is how I'd suggest structuring your customers, the name of the customer themselves and the name of the listing, because hopefully you'll have other listings to do with the same customer. And in this way, you would have a complete list of every listing you ever represented that customer on, right? So let's get down to business. The invoice date should be the, the uh, closing date. So we're using the example of June 15th, 2019. We can paste that in. Um, the way I have my QuickBooks Online setup done, it includes a service date on the invoice. You can ignore that or you can put the same date in there. Okay, and then the first thing we have is the broker's commissions, right? So we're going to create a new product called broker commissions. And we need this to distinguish between the broker commissions that we earn as the broker versus the agent commissions that we'll pay out, which is, of course, our expense, right? So we should have an income account called commissions income, which we do. Okay. And so what you saw happen just now is when I went to create broker commissions, it wasn't already set up. So we're setting it up and we're setting it up as a service item always. 
save and close. And now the other trick, and I've taught this before in a lot of other videos, we're going to take the selling price of 750000 and stick that in the quantity. And the rate is 0.03. We have to convert the percentage into a decimal. You do that by moving the decimal two to the left, right? So 0.03 is the commission rate. And as you can see, that gets us our calculated commission dollars of 22500 This makes it nice. So in reports later on, we can clearly see what the listing sold for, what the commission rate was that we earned, and what the resulting dollar amount was, right? Next, we have the royalty. So we're going to set this one up. And since this is royalties being paid out of title, we're going to record this directly to an expense account. All right, so we're going to add this in as royalties. And we'll do it as a service item again. And even though this says income account, we're going to record it to a royalties expense account. And I have to add it. So we're going to add that in. And I usually like to describe this as what's called cost of goods sold because it's a direct write-off against my income that I earned, right? And then obviously this applies to uh, realtors who are part of a franchise, right? Where they have to pay the royalties. So this is again, simple. We have the name royalties. It's linked to an income account. Uh, it's not linked to an income account, but in the income account, we're actually linking it to cost of goods sold. And we're going to put that in as the negative 450. So because it's negative on the invoice, this has the effect of increasing an expense. Where a positive number on a form like this would normally increase income, a negative number would decrease income. Or since this is linked to an expense, it's going to increase the expense. Okay, back to the scrap sheet. Now we have the agent commission. Remember, the agent commission is still something we'll have to record in a separate transaction to pick up the fact that we have the expense that we've paid the agent, right? So what we wanna do here is we wanna subtract this out from our uh, what we receive as the broker in commissions because the title company paid it directly. And the way we wanna track this is it really has to go through a liability. It has to sweep through an account called agent, uh, agent commissions payable, right? So we're gonna create that item. Okay, again, a service item. And this time this is going to go to a liability account. Okay, we're gonna create that account and it's an other current liability. And for the detail type, we'll also do other current liability. I have a typo in the name. And again. Okay, we also will need to use this when we record the bill later. And it's going to go to the same exact account because when we record the bill, this just has to clear out, as you'll see, because it's already been paid. It's been paid out of title, but this is how we have to record it on our end. Okay, save and close for that one. And the agent commission's payable is $18,000. Okay, and what we could do on this one and should do since we've laid it out this way is if the agent commission is calculated based on 80% of the broker commission, which is the scenario I've given you here, then we could do something similar to what we did with the broker's commission, right? So we actually take the full 22,500, put that in the quantity here. This is 0 0.80 because that's 80%, right? and it needs to be negative. So the rate is actually negative 0 0.80, and that gets us our negative 18,000, right? Now this gets us our invoice total of 4,500. Um, what are we missing here? We have 22,5, and for some reason the 450 dropped off from there. Now it says 4,050 appropriately, right? And so I always check, because that was some weird buggy thing with QuickBooks Online. I have no idea why it did that. But now it's definitely right. So always check your math, right? Always, that's the other reason for sketching this out here ahead of time. Always make sure that everything agrees. That's how you know that you've accounted for everything properly, okay? Now, we're gonna save this, and then we're gonna look at a report real quick, and then we have to record the agent's commission, because remember, we need to pick up the expense, right? So that we can 1099 the agent for it. And we need to uh, record the fact that they were paid. So I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like. So we'll say save and close. We'll run a quick report. I'm gonna run a profit and loss, but I'm going to customize this and we're going to filter it for that one listing, that one customer, right? So we'll do one, two, three Main Street right there. 
and run the report. Because now we can see it in report form. We are in 22,500. So far, we've got the royalties of 450, right? But we don't see the expense yet because the way we recorded the agent commission, it's not showing up here. We didn't record that as an expense because it wouldn't, you, you, and the reason it has to be done this way, by the way, I could actually have taken that agent commission deduction and mapped that directly to an expense, but then it wouldn't be associated with a vendor. And in order to 1099 the agent, we need a vendor associated with that expense. So that's one of the main reasons why you can't just do it in the invoice, right? So I'm going to duplicate this tab, and then we're going to show you how to create the bill. So uh, let's go add a new transaction under vendors. We're going to use a bill. And this is going to be a $0 bill, as you'll see. So we'll just create some agent as the vendor. Obviously, you'll put the agent's name in there. Okay. And in, when you create a bill, you have two sections, category details and item details. So let's start with the item details. Okay. And what we're going to do is we need, this is where we're going to pick up the expense for the 18000 now. So now we need agent commissions but not payable, agent commissions paid, let's call it, right? And we're going to add that in, and that's going to be a service, okay? And this is going to go to commissions paid, right? Which I would normally set up as a cost of goods sold. I have this here in this company from other recordings as a, as a regular expense. It's very easy to fix. But bottom line is this needs to go to the commissions paid. This would never really be used on an invoice, but I'll leave it checked off there just in case. Okay, and then this is going to be, uh, again, we can use the breakdown where it's 22,500 times the 80%, right? So the quantity, 22,500, the rate, 0.8, and we get our 18,000. Now, if I record this as is, I'm going to have a bill for 18,000, that's never going to get paid because it's already been paid out of title, which is which goes back to how we treated the eighteen thousand on the invoice. If I go run a report, and you're going to see this is this kind of works backwards here, and I'll explain what I mean by that. So right now the payable is eighteen thousand because when we recorded that deduction on the invoice, that was in effect recouping it, right? So when we record it on the side that we're about to, it's going to zero out. I'm going to prove it to you. You don't have to take my word for it, right? So what we're doing here is in order to zero this bill out, up here in the, actually we can use the items. We don't even need the categories and we should use the items. We should be consistent. If I pull up agent commissions payable, I'm gonna do that as negative 18,000. And on that side, we don't need to do this breakdown because here we're just basically saying, hey, this bill's already been paid and here's how it got paid. It was paid out of title and therefore deducted from the invoice. So this entry right here is what's going to zero out this 18,000 on our balance sheet. And the first line is what's going to get the 18,000 showing up as an expense on that PL that we ran. So let me duplicate this just so we can see everything 360 degrees around. We'll go back to reports, profit and loss. And let's filter this for the one customer. Run that. Okay, so again, still no 18,000 expense yet. Over here, we have the negative 18,000. When I record this, that's all going to get fixed. We're going to zero out that negative 18,000 on the balance sheet, and we're going to get the 18,000 showing up on the P&L. But in order to make sure that that happens, we need to associate this with the customer, right? So that's the last piece that's really important. Otherwise, it won't show up on that P&L. It'll show up on a standard P&L, but it won't show up on a P&L that's filtered specifically for this customer, which is what this is doing. And this, by the way, is how you get the whole deal uh, reported on, is you use what's called job costing, which is where we make sure all the expenses are associated with the customer. Everything that we recorded on the invoice is because the invoice is tied to that customer. So we have to make sure that when we record any expenses like this one, that we also tie it to the customer, and this is how you do that in that drop down. So I'm going to hit save and close. Okay, and now our profit and loss is updated. Notice it nets out to the 4,050 that we received, which was the broker's uh, net sort of share of the commissions. But our income is actually the whole 22,500. Then we just subtract the 450 in royalties and the 18,000 in commissions paid. 
And let's quickly fix the chart of accounts on that, just so you can see how that works. So I'll go in here, commissions paid, and we're going to edit this account, and we're going to make that cost of goods sold. Okay, and now if I refresh my profit and loss, that brings it all up here. So for a realtor, showing commissions and cost of goods sold is the way I like to see it because now I can see clearly 22.5. Over here, I've got my commissions and my royalties. Down here in the general expenses, I might have any other expenses I incurred along the way on that listing. If I paid for any advertising or signage or whatever I did, you know, that I would show down here in the uh, expenses area so that we have a complete P&L that shows us everything that happened for that one deal. This is the essentials, right? The essential use case is where we make sure everything goes through a customer, both on the income and the expense side. And in that way, I can run a P&L and filter it for that customer and see everything. I see the gross commission, all the cost of goods sold, any expenses, and the net that I did on that job. And this, of course, ties to the amount that we deposited. And then, just to round this all out, if we go back to our balance sheet, Okay, notice the uh, commissions payable is in fact zeroed out. Uh, we have the 4015 accounts receivable because now we have to record the last piece, which is we got the money from the title company. The title is going to send us 4050 at the end of the day. So all we need to do is receive the payment on the invoice, right? And there's our invoice for 4050. This will correspond to a deposit that we got, let's say, the following Monday, right? and we'll deposit it straight into our bank account, right? iBank, whatever I called it. And when I do this, uh, that's my profit and loss. This takes me back to the balance sheet. You can now see that I have the 4050 in the iBank bank account. It's come out of accounts receivable. So by receiving the payment, it just moves it there. And that's it, because that's how you'll reconcile. Like I said, you'll get the money from title right into your bank account. That will tie to the invoice amount that you recorded, which we originally sketched out here to make sure that we understood exactly how it was all going to flow. And just to recap, this is why I strongly suggest doing something like this before you sit down to record it in QuickBooks Online, because this will help make the process of recording it in QuickBooks Online much, much easier. You have all the pieces laid out. All you have to do now is get to work and go record it. You have an invoice to record, and then you're going to record a bill for any expenses associated in connection with that listing. That, my friends, is 18 minutes worth on QuickBooks Online for real estate brokers the essentials. As always, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, feedback, you know how to do it. Uh, reach out, comment wherever you happen to be watching this. If you are watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description. It'll take you over into the new uh, area of my site called Nerd Buzz. It will require you to set up a login in order to access it, but other than that, it is absolutely free. And you can access the screenshots in the full write-up, and you can write your comments there, and it kind of brings you in and makes you part of my little internal community. Uh, and that's where I like to hang out with people like you so we can get things done and have more fun and all that good stuff. So again, reach out to me any number of ways to do it. Comment on the video, click over onto my website and comment there. Uh, contact me and, uh, and I'll be happy to help you with anything that you might need help with. That is all I've got for you. As always, I hope you learned something here and had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you on the web.